reading and writing a life-changing experience. Do you remember how you learned to read and write? Do you remember if, if your teacher read books or taught you A, B, C, D, E, F, G, did they? Or did they teach you the sounds? Let me share with you a video of a child who is only five, Spanish, and who can read like this because of synthetic phonics. Can you read the book, please? Yes. Mount Farm. Very good. This is Mount Farm. Farmer Green lives on Mount Farm. Ben and Neb are sheep dogs. Very good. Farmer Green checks that they, the sheep are well. Neb and Ben rest in the back of the track. Well done, Oscar. Can you write the tricky word? Read the tricky words, please. Yes. Be both the he. Impressive, isn't it? Jolly impressive. This child learned in a different way. This child learned through synthetic phonics. Now, what is synthetic phonics? I hope by the end of the talk, you understand what synthetic phonics is all about. Now, were you taught in a whole word approach way? Were you taught where your teacher read books or sang songs in English and said, oh, look, this is Snow White that came with the dwarves. Or, or perhaps sang a song and started saying, incy wincy spider, climb up the water spout. Did they teach you like that? Well, teachers here now, they think that if you sing a song on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the whole class go, incy wincy spider, climb up. And you think, oh, yes, woof. They're reading. No, they're not. They're repeating. They are singing. They are not reading. Now, with this, I say nursery rhymes are essential for teaching English. They've got the rhythm and they've got the sounds of English. And you're going to experience now what English sounds like. Now, if you were three or four, text look like what you've just seen. Arabic, squiggles. What can you read? Well, nothing. If your mother tongue is Spanish, English, German, French, then that is what is starting to appear. What can you read? Uh, the the uh, cat and the... the wh wh what can you read? Now, if you're in Spain, you can read. I'm an, I'm an eight-year-old. Can I have a kilo of strawberries. Now you go to England and you ask for a kilo of strawberries and they won't give you strawberries, believe you me. <laughs> and you know why? Because you've used your mother tongue code and you've transferred it to English. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Ruth Misking says, if a child by the age of nine has not read enough, his or her IQ will drop dramatically. You need to read to be able to have a good IQ. A nine-year-old also was asked, who could not read, and said, what does it feel like not to be able to read? It feels like being homeless. We don't want children to be homeless. We want children to read. And the only way to read and write, you'll find out, is through sounds. Teachers, can you read English? First word, what does it say there? Stroiter. Oh, I like Stroiter. 
B or stroy turbine? Who can give me a stroy B? Who can give me a stroy B? What, what is it? Is it a stroy B? Or is it a stroy B? What is it? B, for sure. Stroy B. Well, why is it a stroy B and not a stroy B? Why is it a stroy B and not a stroy B? You've got to tell me. Do you know? Think of the word fly, my, by. How many syllables? One. So, it sounds I, by, fly, my. When you've got more than one syllable, that I changes to I, doesn't it? So it's a stroiter B. Well done, children. Okay. While you were reading that, how many times did you use A, B, C, D, E, F, G? You were looking at that and you thought, yeah, that's an S and a T and an O and an I. You got sister. Or did you look at something that looked like snake and you went, S. And you looked at something that, that, that looked like stick with another one across and you went, T. Did you do that? And did you put sounds together? Did you synthesize the letters, the sounds together to sound stroiter B? That's what you did. You were putting sounds to letter, to, to a letter. Now, do we all agree that we need sounds for speaking, but you were not aware that you need sounds for reading. Now, I'm going to dictate a word now, and if you may, please do write it down. Have a pen or a pencil by hand, and I'm going to dictate one word. Please write it down. Again, it's a made-up word by Sue Lloyd. And the word says, Tangdale. Pardon? What? My name is Coral George. I live in Spain. I've got blue eyes and blonde hair and three brothers and sisters. Can you write that down? Oh, yes, you can. And you know why? because it's in your orthographic store. Ruth Miskin says, short memory, long memory. Short memory, orthographic store. The back of your head is full of words that you've decoded yourself. They are full of words that you can read. How big is the orthographic store of a three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old? Tiny, tiny, tiny. Okay. Tangdale. I'll repeat it again. You will need to look at my mouth. You will need to see what I'm trying to say. Tangdale. Do you want to check? Shall we check? Or shall I collect it and write down 10 out of 10? Italians can participate. Of course you may. Please do take a pen and write down Tangdale the best you can. I am not going... <clears throat> I'm going to show it, but please don't cross out. Just write down what you think next to it, how it should be. This is what you should have written. Is that what you wrote? You wrote what you heard. Did you write a T? Maria, did you write a T? Did you write a T, Juan? Well done. Give yourself a tick. Fantastic. Did you write an A? An A? Yes. Good. Excellent. Fantastic. Did you write a mm? I didn't say Tandale. I said Tangdale. It's a sound, long, song, sing. That is an English sound. Dale, interesting. Do you write AI like rain, train, Spain, and then an L at the end? If you did, it's correct, well done. But that is not the most common way of spelling A in English. You could have also written AY like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But that is not the most common way of writing A at the end with an L. The most common way of spelling A is name, cake, shake, for goodness sake, snake. A consonant E. Did you know that? In Britain, they realize the only way to read and write is through synthetic phonics. Jim Rose, Secretary Advisor of Education. Oh, here he comes, saying, the only way to read and write, from 2008, the only way to read and write is through synthetic phonics. Sue Lloyd, a synthetic phonics author, said, about time, 25 years late, but never mind. 
She knew 25 years ago the only way to read and write was through synthetic phonics, a special needs teacher with children in England that they were full of dyslexic children. Watch out. You go to England and dyslexia is catching. You know, you go there and you, I've got dyslexia. <laughs> well, no, you don't. It's because no one has taught you all the sounds. Now, when you were reading, you were reading through sounds, weren't you? When you were writing, you were hearing t, and you wrote something that looked like a t. How many times did you use ABC? No, you didn't. So now I ask you, how many sounds has English got? Do you know? Do you know how, that, how many letters? Do we all agree that there are 26 letters? Wonderful. Now, 26 letters. But how many sounds do you need to speak, read, and write properly in English? 42 to 44 sounds. And unless you know all the sounds, you cannot speak, read, or write properly. Very important. There you can see that children were ahead chronological age in England. In Spain, that five-year-old, that's not chronological age. That's a quantum leap. Have you ever heard Spanish child going green, moat, run? Of course, I taught the sound R uh, like this. Let's open an umbrella. Uh. And every time you saw a letter U went R. Uh, run, mum, pub, wonderful. That is reading. Let me tell you about sounds then. Please participate. Here is mummy. Everyone repeat mummy. Daddy. Now mummy and daddy, they're going for a picnic. And they're having beautiful, oh, an apple. Um, would you like an apple? That's for you. Yeah, come on, eat your apple. You want an apple? That's for you. Oh, and mummy made cakes as well. Everyone will have a cake. There you are, come on, cakes for everyone. Eat your cake. Mmm, lovely. And mummy decided to make jam sandwich. All <gasps> oh, the ants. Ah, ah, ants on my arm. Ah, ah, ants on my arm. Ah, ah, ants on my arm. They're causing me alarm. Oh, my word. Jam's got out the ant hole. And they could smell their jam. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Everyone repeat. Ah. Man. Hat. What letter is this, children? Aren't you clever? Let's do another sound. Oh, these children are playing tennis. I can see a cat. I can see a tent. Oh, look, th there is a tennis racket. There are, they're going to play tennis with two rackets and they go t, 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 t. Everyone with your head. One, two, three. T, t. When I watch the tennis game, t, 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 t. when I watch the tennis game, my head goes back and forth. Everyone repeat. T, 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 t. Wonderful. Very good. What sound is that, children? What sound is this? Well done. Let me tell you another sound. Oh, they're celebrating a birthday party. Oh, I can see there, there is a pink pig. And, and look, they've got, there's a puppy and popcorn. And oh, let's blow the candle. Are you ready? Puff candle candles on the pink, pink cake. Puff, 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 puff. Puff the candles on the pink, pink cake. Puff, puff, puff. Well done. Repeat, pig. Cup. Pink. Excellent. So now let's see if you can read children. Let's see if you can blend and then you segment. One, two, three. Let's read children. What does he say here? A, t, at. T, a, p, tap. What does he say now at the very top? A, t, pat. Fantastic. I'm going to give you fireworks. That is excellent. You can read. Now, children, shall we write? Let's write. And you know how you write? You segment a word. You first hear it fully, and you go, cat. And like Debbie Hepperwhite says, that's how we write cat. Cat. At. Cat. Three sounds. Rain. Er. A, N, rain. Three sounds. 
because some sounds have more than one letter. So, did you know that the sound O from E O, the sound O is written in 12 different ways? No wonder everyone is dyslexic in England with A, B, Z. You need to be told that there is a sound O, and then you can say door, double O R, snore, O consonant E, caught, A U G H, thought, O U G H. Were you told that at school? Our children are being told that. The British government right now is, given, is giving every single infant and primary school in England £3,000. Oh, how nice. To go on holiday. No. They are given to only spend on synthetic phonics training and synthetic phonics decodable books, real books, books that children can read properly. What's the point of having a beautiful book with beautiful pictures and next to it strawberry, banana, chair? Have you taught the sound air? Have you told them that the sound j at the end can be DGE like fridge? This happened to me. I was teaching the sound j, 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 jelly and jam, jelly and jam, multisensory approach. You see, you hear, and you do an action. And, of course, everyone here would say jam, jelly, jeans. And the four-year-old said, fridge. And I went, m n n n n f r e j. Yes, well done, wonderful. And I thought, oh, blow, that girl will write fridge in a funny way. But I suppose she's only four. By the time she comes to write fridge, you'll be in primary two. It won't be my problem. It'll be primary two teacher's problem. No way. Of course it's my problem. I've got to know how to write fridge. And that's the rule. J at the end, the sound J at the end is never with a J. G-E or D-G-E. Bridge, fridge, edge, hedge. Did you know that? Now, teachers, you are not a language teacher if you're not teaching with sounds. The first thing a child learns in the womb are sounds. You need to teach the sounds. You need to teach 42 sounds. And if you're in Italy, you've got 30 sounds mother tongue. Wonderful. If you're in Spain, you only have 23. That's why we say hello. Get that h out of the way. It's I like to hop, hop. <laughs> hello, hat. How are you? Now, this is an idea worth spreading. And it's up to you to spread the word now.